Hello! Today we're going to be talking about some of my fictional crushes. You may notice that a lot of these are from TV and movie rather than just like straight up books because I need a visual to work with, okay? You know what I'm saying? Also there's going to be a lot of bisexual chaos in this, so strap in if you will. Back in the day when I felt it was relevant to my life to watch BuzzFeed videos, Years and years and years ago, they did a video on your childhood sexual awakening. I watched that video and I was like, I don't, I don't think I have that. I have no memory of a character that really like did that for me. You know what I'm saying? And then a few years after watching that video, I re-watched a little video called The Road to El Dorado. And my God, after having come out and watching that movie and being hit full body with a visual of Chell, I was like, oh, that's what that was, <laughs> okay. Chell is so hot, okay? She's the best looking beard I've ever seen, okay? Because that movie is Ken and Gay, okay? Look it up if you're interested. But literally, what business does DreamWorks have in making animated characters that hot? Can a small, confused, queer child not just have some peace in the world? Keeping on the cartoon train. Like most bisexuals, pansexuals, looking back, I realized that I was very interested in Shigo from Kim Possible. I don't want to get graphic, but she could murder me and I'd be okay with it, if you know what I mean. Also from the fantastic graphic novel series, Pretty Deadly, is Death Face Ginny. Oh my god, okay? Just women who can kill me? Hello? Lastly, from the realm of cartoon, we have the Duchess of Lesbianism herself, Velma Dinkley. I am specifically talking about the 2000-2004 live action movies though, with Linda Cardellini, my wife, playing Velma. Have you seen her? Okay, the smile lines, the ability to do math. Okay, she's so Ooh, I don't know what to do with myself. If she just like showed up and was like, hi, hello, let me, let me take you away. I would, ah, no thoughts, automatic yes. My bag is packed and I'm already ready, to be quite honest. <laughs> I am no Daphne, okay? Because that is also canon gay. I mean, I'm wearing purple eyeshadow on one eye, so like a bitch can try. <laughs> From the childhood archives, we also have Gilbert Bly my heart. One, this was my first introduction to a hate to love romantic trope and I am all about it, okay? So there's that. I also just have like a crush on Anne and Gilbert's relationship in general. Like it just really set out an expectation <laughs> for me, if you will. Although this did begin with me watching the movies as a child, okay, again, visual needed. In the last few years when I've been rereading the books, it's only deepened the feelings because wow, the boy yearns like a lesbian. <laughs> he is so soft, so soft. We're gonna dip into the Marvel Cinematic Universe for a brief moment, okay? But stay, stay with me because we're gonna be talking about this man, Bucky Barnes slash Winter Soldier. Now, this is mostly <laughs> about Sebastian Stan, okay? I'm not gonna lie. Sebastian Stan, celebrity crush. Well, as of this week, number two, okay? We'll get into it in a second, but in a way that has very little to do with the characters he plays. <laughs> in the words of Brittany Broski, hi, sir, Bucky Barnes. How, how can you not? You know what I'm saying? How, where, what is not, what are we not working with, really? Well, that's a yes. Winter Soldier, also a yes for me. I, I don't know why. <laughs> Please forgive my problematic high school self. I was very into the metal arm. I, okay, I'm about to get a little vulnerable in the space. <laughs> okay, at one point, in the, in the depths of my youth, I may or may not have had a slight kind of fantasy moment about where I, I was like caring <laughs> for the Winter Soldier, you know what I'm saying? Like Bucky as the Winter Soldier, like where he would like scream in the night because of like pain or trauma the flashbacks and like I would I would rush to him and like calm him down and help him feel better oh my god I hate I hate this I hate this I hate this so much this is the closest I ever got to being interested in like a sad boy you know what I'm saying instead it was more just like muscular trauma 
and I was not about to get in the middle of the Bucky and Steve gay this okay I just felt that maybe there was also space for me in there <laughs> because Steve Rogers is a big buy, okay? Just a big buy man. You know, so like maybe I could be with Bucky when Steve was off being super weird and making out with his true love's granddaughter when there was no tension there and it was not needed, but it happened anyway, okay? You know what I'm saying? I just felt like we could make room. More importantly though, we have Peggy motherfucking Carter. Hello? Again, a lot of this has to do with Hayley Atwell. <laughs> and also the fact that in terms of celebrity women, I'm often very interested in other curvy brunettes. You may not have seen the rest of me, but trust. Lucy Liu as Alex Monday in Charlie's Angels really did a lot for me in high school. Okay, she really brought up some questions that I was having with myself. I also, in terms of her as Joan Watson in elementary, I have a lot of deep sapphic admiration for her. Okay, very much style icon. During my undergrad, my dad and I watched all of the X-Files, okay? <laughs> I realized that watching the series and having crushes on both Scully and Mulder is very much like being bi and I made a whole video on it if you want to hear more. But in essence, first there's that like outward immediate attraction to Mulder. I honestly don't really know why. Like he is good looking and also just inexplicably cocky for somebody of that lifestyle. <laughs> And the choices he's made. Then you realize slowly that you've actually been in love with Scully the whole time and she is the most capable and beautiful person you've ever seen in your life. I also just wanted to give a quick little throw out to who is now my number one celebrity crush. She's not really a fictional character so much as like a historical reenactment, okay, which is why I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it. But recently, my dad and I have been watching Rise of the Ottoman Empire, which is a docudrama about the conquering of Istanbul from Mehmed II, which was recommended to me by my boyfriend, okay, the Turkish one. Not that there's more than one, but the one that is Turkish. So we watched it. And I mean, it's just chock full of hot Turkish people. Like, let's just be real on that. But in particular, Mara Brankovic, who is Mehmed's stepmother, is played by Tuba Boyugustun. Probably not saying that right. And she is truly and deeply the most beautiful person I have ever seen in the world. And I am still, I'm just thinking about it a lot. <laughs> Tuba. Firstly, Merhaba. Nasolsin. Okay, secondly, Arkadash Olabilian Mayiz. Let me know. I'll immigrate. <laughs> We're gonna wrap it up with a more of a general trope. This last year, again, my dad and I, okay, he's just my companion in viewing things. We decided to like dip into the BBC Musketeers like 2016 moment. And upon watching the character of Aramis, played by Santiago Cabrera. I apologize with the English words. Upon watching that and having many a visceral reaction to, to the character, I realized that there is a trope that has been very present in terms of my romantic interests throughout my life. And that is that of the lovable scoundrel with a heart of gold. Okay, there's many, many a character that I was very interested in <laughs> throughout my life that fits into this. And I was talking about this with my friend and she was like, yes, it's that, but is that under a more kind of broad, general umbrella of the historical himbo? <laughs> and I was like, yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> it absolutely is. So I think I'm gonna do another video on tier ranking all the historical himbos slash scoundrels with the heart of gold characters that I have crushes on. So, you know, stay tuned for that. <laughs> please, for the love of God, please tell me what your fictional crushes are. I would love nothing more in this world than to know, okay? It's very important to me. So hit me up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.